Hey, Leah. Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. I hope all is well. Hi, how are you? Good. So I just wanted to know, uh, what, what exactly do you think it is about judo that provides such a strong base for MMA? Um, judo, I think the physicality of it and the technique, and you have to have a lot of balance, you know, uh, and when you do that from a young, young age, it's, it's, uh, it can't really be unlearned when you're in there, when you're getting into quick uh, grapple exchanges or clinches or scrambles, you have that solid um, foundation and technique and, and balance in your own body. Got it. And uh, so last question for me, uh, where, where do you think a win over Janae here on Friday would position you in the division? Um, I haven't really thought about it. I've just focused on my performance and bringing out the best of myself on Friday night and move it on to the next opponent. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Thanks. All right, Mark. Um, hey, hey, Leah. Um, first of all, um, how has it been for you to uh, do on camera work and has that helped you grow as a fighter? Yeah, you know, I am. Um, Bellator gave me the opportunity to do some uh, TV stuff while I had my shoulder surgery. I was recovering from that and it was good to still be involved. You know, I'm a bit of an MMA nerd. I, I constantly watch fights, study fighters, and uh, I knew I, I would be able to do it because of just my knowledge. And um, it was definitely nice to sit back and watch and analyze and, and you know, look at different opponents that I would obviously never be fighting and, and see what they bring to the table. And, it, you know, I did definitely learn the last 15 months. It's not just in the gym, smash my body every day. It's going to help me um, get better. And it's been nice to kind of take that bit of a step back and uh, get that experience. And my last question for you, you know, this is the first time you fought in the United States since your amateur days. Uh, How's it been for you to uh, make the trip back over the United States and uh, to be able to acclimate uh, here at Bellator, especially considering the, uh, we're still under COVID uh, restrictions? been so so nice so chilled so zen compared to the crazy fight week of Bellator Dublin last year you know this I keep saying it and this has been you know so relaxed and um, it's the calmest I've ever felt and uh, so focused and it's, it's been nice just being able to breathe and, and, and calm instead of constantly doing things fight week and not being able to just relax so it's been a really nice environment out here Bellator have looked after us so well and uh, I'm just really full of uh, gratitude to, to be in this position and to have this opportunity to fight on Friday night because I know so many amateurs are back home getting fights cancelled, so many pros are getting fights cancelled and um, I just want to enjoy this process and I have done so far. Gabriel? Hi Leah, two questions. Uh, the first one, going back to your work on television, what kind of work did you do to prep? Because obviously you have experience in the cage and being a fighter, but in terms of knowing how to conduct yourself on camera, what kind of work did you do to be ready for that kind of role? Like I was just throwing it at the deep end. <laughs> I did like 10 hours of live TV and never had ever done anything before, but I, I'm such a nerd. I had like all my notes. I had like hours and hours of notes. I was doing Zoom calls. It's like to the, the guys like, like John McCarthy and and Josh, and we were all um you know going over the fights and fighters and and what we thought they were going to bring to the table. I was doing calls with Jude. I was um doing a lot of my own research and, and speaking to a lot of I have a lot of friends on TV, just getting some advice and and uh, I think it's you know that that definitely helped me. I I always am over prepared for anything I do, so um that, that was nice to get the opportunity. And then my second question, looking at the featherweight division, you only have a few fights, but I think a lot of people see this as if Chris Cyborg wins, she's already taken out a lot of the people who would be, you know, hypothetically ahead of you. How do you manage your own expectations? Because it feels like they have you on the fast track, but you've said yourself, you're still trying to grow as a pro. Yeah, you know, I've only had, I think I'm like the least experienced in the whole division. <laughs> I have uh, um do you know, only, only, I think it was only four fights and, and they, I was headlining the arena in Dublin last year. So it's nice to have that recognition, but, you know, it comes down to me and my performance every every fight. And I just need to, you know, shoot up that level every time I'm fighting. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of a gap in the division between the experience and the lower rankings and the higher. And um, for, for me to get there, I need to, need to jump every fight and get and, and show so much more and sh- show so much more of my skill level. All right, one or two more. Dylan? I appreciate you making some time. No worries. I was just curious because I had noticed on the Instagram there, you had a bit of a 
hidden kind of situation in the suitcase there. A nice little card from your daughter, Isabella. <laughs> I'm wondering how much motivation that gives you heading into this one, because that definitely made me smile seeing that. Oh, I know. She, she breaks my heart. And anybody that asks me, but I just start crying. But she is my, she's my biggest motivation, obviously. Like, she, you know, I've grown up, we've grown, I've grown up together. I had her so young and we were just such a team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm out right here trying to make her proud and, and provide a better life for her. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, well, you're definitely doing just that from what I can tell. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Last one here, Jake. Hi, Ali, are you all right? Hi, yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, so yeah, as we mentioned before, of course, the last time you did fight in America, it was at the 2016 IMAF World Championships. If you could go back to World Champion, IMAF World Champion Leah McCourt then, what one bit of advice would you give her up to the point now that you've learned during your professional career so far? Uh, I would tell her to believe in yourself and to keep persevering no matter what comes in my way. And that's just my mentality for everything now. I just feel like no matter what comes up, I'm going to overcome it. And how special has it been for you then, if you look from, again, that world championship through to now being a top contender in that featherweight division, how special is it for you to look back and just see just how much you've achieved in so few fights as a professional? It's definitely, you know, I still kind of pinch myself with the opportunities I've been given and the um, and how fast my career has kind of took off. You know, I came back, I lost my professional debut and came back and went on a bit of a run, you know, and it just shows that I always say to people, if you're going through hell, keep going. And no matter what comes up, you can uh, achieve what you want to. And, and, you know, I definitely look back and I can see God's hand in my life in, in every every situation. You know, he, he opens doors that no man can shut. And, and I still, and I, and I believe that's why, you know, I've really trusted in him with my journey and my path and where my career's going.